Good morning, Tamara here. I just wanted to invite you by for a quick sewing tutorial for a short sleeve button up top with a self facing. We're gonna be creating it from the autumn stroll pattern and we're gonna be making it for the MSD Kwigs doll. So come on along. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So today I thought I would sew very quickly a button up short sleeve collared shirt. In this case, I'm using the Autumn Stroll pattern for Patsy, but I'm gonna make the pattern available for the MSDK Wigs doll. So I went ahead and I chose my companion fabrics. That's something I like to do at the beginning of constructing an outfit. So in this case, it has a little top with a collar, a jumper, and also a coat. So I wanted to pick those fabrics in advance to make sure that I had enough of each color before I got started and then later found out that I should have picked a different color. So we're gonna be making this little um, short sleeve collared button up out of this um, yellow fabric. And then we'll probably do the jumper in another video in this this cheery fabric and then maybe the coat in this. So let's move those to the side and go ahead and get started. I have this pattern available for about eight different child dolls and then I also have it for the larger fashion dolls but the jumper and top have turned into a dress in those patterns and it went from autumn stroll to autumn spell as far as the name of the pattern. So we have just four pieces and we're gonna go ahead and work with these. We have the front of the top, we have the back of the top, the collar, and then also the sleeve. So I'm gonna set the pattern pieces to the side and then I'm gonna go ahead and start with the front and back pieces together. The construction of this is relatively easy and the reason I thought it would be good to show it is it's a top with the self-facing cut onto the front piece. And if you haven't made this type of top before, it feels a little bit challenging. Once you see it constructed, it feels pretty easy. So that's our goal. All right, so we're gonna take those two front pieces and we're gonna just match them to the back pieces at, at the shoulder seam. And we're gonna just sew right here along both shoulders. Now my stitch length is set at a two and a half and it's on a straight stitch. If you feel more comfortable pinning the pieces together as you go, I fully encourage you to do that. We're gonna go ahead and sew that second shoulder seam. Now, when I'm constructing an outfit, I generally tend to press it as I'm going for uh, each seam to press the seams open, but to save the opportunity to have to switch the camera angle back and forth so many times, I'm gonna do a couple of steps and then do the uh, seam steaming. The next step we're gonna do is go ahead and sew the center back seam of that self-facing right here. So now that we have that done, I'm gonna set that aside just for a second and do a couple of pieces with the um, collar and also with the sleeve. So right sides together, I'm gonna to pin the collar or uh, place the collar together and sew around the outside of that collar. I'll use a couple of pins just to keep it stable here. And I'm leaving the neck edge open. It's a beautiful day in North Carolina today. It's very early and no one's up yet. So I can just hear the birds outside and the sun is just coming over the lawn. So I love that. Remember, you can pick up your uh, sewing machine foot as you're doing a nice smooth collar and kind of ease it around if it's hard to keep it with that quarter inch seam allowance. So we have our collar pieces sewn together and our threads trimmed. I just think it makes a nicer finish on the inside of the sleeve. I've never had a doll complain, but uh, maybe because they like it. 
All right. So another step I'm going to do before taking it over to the ironing board is I'm going to run a slight basting stitch around the top of the sleeve cap right here. And that's just to ease that sleeve. Now on this one, there is a slight pucker or gather at the um, sleeve cap. So you are going to have a little bit of um, a gather at the top. It's not just an ease. I'm going to set my sleeve length to straight, but also make it a lot longer, maybe even a four. And I can always pull this out after I have the sleeve assembled into the armhole. And I'm running that about an eighth of an inch from the edge of that sleeve cap. I'm gonna repeat that on that second sleeve. Okay. Now from here, I have quite a few steps um, that need some attention over at the ironing board. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clip around the outside of the collar. Anytime you have a rounded piece, you can go ahead and do a little triangular cut to decrease the amount of material um, that you're turning. It will also reduce the bulk and make it a smoother turned edge. So I'm just clipping little triangles in my collar. And then I can actually even cut this um, seam allowance down to about an eighth of an inch because I want this to be as round as possible without any bumps in it. At the shoulder. Also at that uh, center back facing. Next, we're going to turn the hem edge of the cuff up by a quarter of an inch and just press that. And finally, we're going to turn our collar right side out, make a nice smooth rounded edge, and we're going to press that as well. Now I like to use, first of all, roll the two pieces of fabric between your finger until you expose the seam. That's gonna help to round it out without any little puckers or tucks in it. Once I have a pretty good outline of where that seam is, then I use my flat, or that's what I call it, a flat, and I go ahead and just kind of follow the edge of the seam with it. That seems to smooth out any bumps. And so um, this is a tool that my mom gave me. It also runs elastic and it's great for turning corners as well. So if you find something like this, this can be a really helpful tool for um, tiny sewing projects. So once I feel comfortable that the collar is pretty rounded out, I'm gonna go ahead and press it. Then we'll take all these pieces back over to the sewing machine and continue construction of that great top for the K-Wigs. Okay, now we're back at the sewing machine. So let's go ahead and top stitch the uh, sleeves for the blouse. And then we will actually get the construction going. So I have my machine set back to a straight stitch and now I have it back to a two and a half to a three inch stitch length. I'm just going to trim those threads. The next step is going to be to go ahead and open up the top of the blouse and to do a zigzag stitch along that front facing. Again, I just like to finish it in that way. If your fabric doesn't fray, it's an alternative step that you can skip if you prefer. So that again is a zigzag stitch. Um, still a small stitch length, two and a half to a three.
All right, so at this stage, you have an option. You can either go ahead and install the sleeves or you can install the collar. And I think I'm gonna do the collar first. Over at the ironing board, I folded the back section in half and put a little press mark there so I would know where the center back was. And then I did the exact same thing for the collar. It's just an easy point of reference versus pinning it. So that makes it a little bit easier. Before you actually put the collar in, if you wanna take just a few small cuts in to that curve, that's gonna make the um, application easier as well. Just really small wall about an eighth of an inch then we're going to pin this together with the um, center backs showing so I'm going to take those steam lines or those fold lines that I created and put it on now visually if you look at this piece you want to make sure that you have the exact uh, same length coming off of that sleeve seam to the point of each of those collars otherwise when you put it in the collar is going to be a little bit askew so I'm eyeballing it as well as matching up the center backs to make sure I don't have anything weird going on once I feel pretty confident I'm going to pin it <clears throat> excuse me I'm going to pin it in place and I'm just going to base that collar in because the self-facing is actually going to be what sews it in so I'm going to do about an eighth of an inch from the inside of that neck edge And I can use a longer stitch there in case I need to make any adjustments or I need to reposition uh, the collar after I get it installed. Once you have your collar basted in, you want to go ahead and uh, fold the front facing back over that collar. And there's a couple of things you can reference before you do this to make sure that the garment's going together properly. So if you look at your original pattern piece, you'll see that this dotted line with small dots is the fold line. So if I actually fold that back, that's how this front facing should be on the garment once I fold that self facing back over the collar. So one thing you can do if you're not really comfortable with this style of construction is you can take your heat erasable marker and you can kind of mark on the pattern um, how much of a fold back that should be so you know how much you should fold back over the collar. So you can just put a couple of dots there as a point of reference and those will go away with your iron once you steam it. But it kind of, it's nice when you finish that it's actually equal on both sides. So you can just dot up this way. And that should give you an equal distribution on both sides. So we can see our dots are here. And now we have that fold line we created at the ironing board. So we know where the center back is and we're just gonna go ahead and apply that. And then just check our dots to see if they seem like they're lining up on the right spot, which it looks like they are. And then pin it in place and sew the collar. Once you install the collar this way a few times, it, it's not as bad. Initially, it's a little challenging to get it just perfect, but with practice, everything becomes better. And make sure you adjust your stitch length back to that smaller stitch from the base stitch. Now we have our collar in. Before you clip or trim any of the seams around that collar edge, you do wanna go in and make sure that the collar was applied as you want it to be. I've made a lot of mistakes where I've cut seams and then turned it and found out that I needed to make an adjustment, but it was too late. So you don't wanna ruin it. You wanna make sure you check. So let's just open that up there, see how it looks. On the top of the collar, everything is nice and smooth. Then you wanna check on the bottom as well. It's easy to catch it twice on the back and you just wanna be careful. So that also looks fine. So now what we're gonna do 
before we trim it is we're going to make sure that our front tab or where the buttons are going to go is an equal length on both sides. So let's check that. If you check it to each side like this, that looks pretty reasonable. I think I can live with it. <laughs> now you can trim the seam and that way um, you know that you've done everything properly. Now again, this is one of the rounded seams, so you can go ahead and make those triangular cuts in on the uh, seam allowance instead of a straight cut to get some of the bulk of the fabric out. And then right at that tab edge, I go ahead and make a 45 degree angle cut. That's just to make the point a little bit better. And then we'll turn that right side out. Now I can still see those dots where we um, had hit this with the heat erasable marker. So that helps me to line up the front facing as I fold it back. And I'm just gonna iron right along that edge. Now those dots disappeared, which is great. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now I want, what I wanna do is just fold the self-facing into it and kind of gently press that collar edge so everything goes to the inside of the garment. So that's where we are so far. I think it's looking pretty good. So let's take it over and put the sleeves in and then we'll finish by completing the hem. All right, we're moving right along, which is great. And now what we're gonna do is go ahead and put the sleeves into the blouse. So in order to do that, we're just gonna have to go ahead and pull the um, basting stitch that we put in there. And this doesn't have a front or back sleeve, so you actually can put it in either direction, obviously right sides together. So I'm gonna pull a little bit gently here. And as I said before, it's not just an ease. There are a little bit of a gather to the top of the sleeve. Um, knowing that the sleeve cap at the top is gonna line up with that shoulder seam, that's gonna be my point of reference. I prefer not to do a lot of pinning of the sleeve because I like to lift my sewing foot as I go around the corner. So with right sides together, I'm just gonna start on um, one of the front sections and I will pin that very first spot. And that's just so I make sure I line up the side of the sleeve with the side of the top. Make sure as you go that you don't hit the self-facing with the sleeve. So you wanna make sure you're tucking that back to the inside and that you've adjusted your stitch back to straight and also to an appropriate length of a two and a half to a three. So I'm gonna get it started. I have everything pulled to the inside and I'm just gonna sew it in place. So we have our first sleeve in. And again, before clipping that seam or anything, you're gonna to wanna to check to the inside. So we have our little gathers at the top as we anticipated. It lined up at both sides, which we also needed it to do. So let's go ahead and do the second sleeve. Now that we have both of our sleeves in, we can go ahead and just trim the sleeve seam allowance if you'd like. Um, I like to use pinking shears. I like the effect on the inside, but you can also just use regular scissors. This is just to decrease the bulk in the garment. If for our next step, we're just gonna go ahead and sew the blouse together at the underarm and side seams. So it's just right sides together, nice, easy, straight stitch. 
you're going to match that sleeve seam in the side of the sleeve and then go down to the hem edge. Sleeve opening <coughs> and then draw it forward. Let's check the inside of the garment to make sure that worked well. It looks like it did, but I'd like to be sure. So we did match the sleeve seam here on the inside and as well on the second side. We have our pins out, so we're gonna go ahead and just trim the seam allowance with my pinking shears, and then we're almost finished. We're just gonna go ahead and hem the blouse and then see how the fits come into the doll. Okay, so one of the final steps of the blouse construction is going to be to go ahead and hem it. And the way I like to do this is I like to turn the facing open and then along that hem edge, I'm just gonna run a zigzag stitch as I did along the sleeve edge and also along the sew facing edge. And that's just what I like to do to finish it. Again, it's an option. So I'm just gonna take a zigzag stitch of about a three by three width and I did go ahead and press the side seams open where I had used my pinking shears. Once I have that zigzag stitch finished, I like to turn the facing to the outside of the blouse at that folded edge, which is the front and just do a quarter inch seam right here. And that's gonna make the front points of the bottom of the blouse nice and crisp. And then I'm gonna turn up the remaining hem edge a quarter inch and press and top stitch along the whole thing. I like to clip into that uh, corner, a uh, 45 degree angle from the point, but not too close to the seam. And that's gonna make a sharper corner point. You can see once you have that corner created, you have a nice quarter inch fold up. So I'm just gonna follow that along and press it and then go over to the machine and top stitch it. Okay, let's go ahead and try this on our doll and see how we like it and also mark the placement for the snaps as well as where we might want to put those buttons. All right, so we have the top relatively finished. The last few steps are just going to be to mark the placement for the snaps and to go ahead and add some decorative buttons. Now keep in mind, if this is something that you're gonna tuck in, then you don't want the last button to end up right where the pants go in this case. Um, and you can also leave it open so that there's actually a little bit of a collar. So you decide if you wanna go all the way to the top with the snaps or if you wanna leave an opening. Um, this is a doll that my mom lent me to use for this demonstration and she has a broken hand. If anyone knows where I could order an additional hand for her as a thank you and a replacement, please leave it in the comments below. We did it. We made it to the end of another sewing project. We've completed the top with a self facing for the MSD K Wigs doll. I hope this information was helpful to you and that you were able to pick up some tips or tricks that might make construction of this type of garment easier for you going forward. As always, I invite you to hit that subscribe button and share this video with your friends. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And remember, if you know where I can get one of those hands for that K-Wigs for my mom, I'd really appreciate that information too. I'll see you in the next video.